Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a recipe to share with you today. We're going to be making sugar cookies and I am using my own recipe but it is inspired by the Martha Stewart recipe for sugar cookies but I am going to change it and I will tell you why I'm changing it and what the ingredients are that I'm using. So the first thing I'm going to do is melt some butter. I'm using this butter that I recently found. I think it's a cultured butter. It tastes really good, but it's different than regular butter. And I'm going to heat that in the microwave to melt it. In the meantime, I'm going to add about three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now the recipe does call for more sugar, but because our icing is going to be so sweet, I decided to go less on the sugar. I'm also going to add about one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. You can certainly omit this if you'd like, but it does impart a nice flavor. So that's a generous half cup of butter. It's a little bit more than a half cup of butter. And I'm going to start to mix that together. And to this, I'm going to add a couple of eggs. Now the recipe does call for just one egg and I am going to add two eggs. This is gonna give it a more cakey-like or bread-like consistency in the end. It's not gonna be as sweet and it's a little bit more dense than a typical sugar cookie. And I was trying to make it a little bit healthier here. I am using all organic ingredients and I also am using all natural colors to do the icing. So I'm going to be using different things that I found around the kitchen in order to make the icing colors. Now it's time to add the flour. I have about a third cup of flour reserved for when we roll out the cookies and I'm going to add two cups of organic flour but I'm going to add it a little bit at a time. I have switched out to use my whisk but again I'm going to switch it out again to use the spoon. So I'm adding a little bit at a time for it to all get incorporated. The first time I made these cookies, I simply mixed four ingredients together, the flour, the sugar, the eggs, and the butter, and I was just adding enough to get a particular consistency that I was looking for that wasn't too sticky and wasn't too dry. But in the spirit of sharing this recipe, I did use a more traditional proportion so that you can hopefully get the same kind of results every time. So I'm gonna turn that out onto my granite countertop. Now it is a little bit soft and so I would recommend putting this in the refrigerator or the freezer to firm up a little bit. It will make it a lot easier when you roll it out and it will make it especially easier when you actually do your cookie cutter shapes. So I'm adding a little bit more flour to this but I'm going to flip it over and that way it's going to be easier when we cut out our little shapes. So I'm gonna add flour to both sides. However, you can also roll this out onto some wax paper, stick it in the freezer so that it firms up and then do your shapes and that way you will ensure that the shapes don't get distorted. So they don't get distorted this time since I am just using a circular shape, but if you're doing something with more intricate designs then I would recommend that you stick it in the freezer before you make your shapes. So I'm also just gonna use a cup for this. Of course, you could use cookie cutters if you had them, but we are making full moon cookies, and so a plastic cup was just what I needed. So here's the trick to not get them all deformed. I'm using a metal spatula, and I am swiftly just putting it underneath each of those shapes because the dough is really soft. And if you go slowly with this, you will completely deform it and make it more like an oval. So I am just moving all of the excess flour or rather dough aside and then just carefully and swiftly removing them from the granite countertop so all that extra flour really helps so that they don't stick. Okay so this recipe will make quite a few of these large cookies but with all of that excess dough I actually make a bunch of smaller cookies that I'll show you in a little bit. I'm going to bake them for about seven minutes at 350 degrees. You might need to go less if you want them a little bit softer or you might need to go longer. It depends on your oven. So now's the fun part. We're going to be experimenting with some different colors with our icing and I'm going to add a half cup of powdered sugar to each of these bowls but later I add another half cup as well so that I get more icing. To the first one, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of turmeric. Now this was the one that smelled the most, but you don't even taste it in the end. To the second powdered sugar bowl, I'm going to add some saffron. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. One, just adding a little bit of saffron to the powdered sugar. Another way later on when you have to add water to it first, that way you extract the color. This pomegranate juice was really beautiful as well as the raspberry. Now for the raspberry, I'm going to use a little sieve here to mush the raspberry. You could also use freeze-dried raspberries. It might be a little bit easier because this got a little bit messy and it was really hard to really extract just the fruit and not the seeds. 
Okay, so now our cookies are done baking, so I'm going to take them out and let them cool while I finish doing the icing. I did not use any parchment paper, but you may also use parchment pa paper if you'd like. So I'm adding about a quarter teaspoon of water to the powdered sugar, mixing it up a little bit, realizing I'm going to need a little bit more. So in the end, about a half teaspoon to about three quarters of a teaspoon is sufficient for about a half cup of powdered sugar. Go slowly on this because a little bit of water is all you need. Now it's going to give you a different consistency depending on how much water you use, thicker or more runny. Uh, so it kind of depends on what you're going for. I find that the thicker consistency is a little bit easier because it doesn't drip over your cookies when they're done. However, a smoother consistency makes it a little bit easier to spread around the cookie and gives you a thinner layer. So it really depends on what kind of icing you're going for. So I'm adding about the same amount of water to each of these. You can see how beautiful those colors are developing. I just decided to add more of the pomegranate juice rather than adding a little bit of water. And you can see that rich color. That's my favorite one of all of the ones that we did. So I did really want green and I struggled with figuring out how I could get green. I tried mint that didn't work. I tried some herbs that didn't work. I had this liquid chlorophyll, which is a supplement that I use. I decided to try that. Wasn't really sure if it was going to impart a strong flavor. It turns out that none of them end up tasting like the materials they come from, except maybe the raspberry a little bit. So I was really pleased to be able to get that green in there. I decided to try to make an orange. Now that the turmeric and the saffron look so similar, I added a little bit of pomegranate juice to the one with the turmeric, and it kind of gave it more of a brown color rather than an orange color, so that didn't work out quite the way I expected. I love the bright yellow from the saffron, and I'm going to show you a different way to do this. I added some hot water just to extract the color from the saffron, and now I'm adding that to the powdered sugar. It gives it a more vibrant yellow and it also doesn't give you any of the little specks of the saffron in the icing, which I think is fine. It gives it a nice little festive look in the end, but if you don't want any of that, then just extract it with some hot water first. So now comes the fun part and that is decorating the cookies. We're gonna keep it super simple. Each cookie is just gonna get one color, but you can get quite carried away with different designs if you wanted to. But I'm just going to add a little dollop on top of each cookie. I did flip them over upside down so that we could get a more smoother finish to the icing. And now I'm going to bring that icing all the way to the edge of the cookie. Now, because this icing is pretty thick, it's not going to drip over the side of the cookie. It's really going to stay firm and together. So I'm really bringing it all the way to the corners. If you have a more runny frosting or icing and you bring it all the way to the edges, it's likely to kind of spill over. And that was the case with, I think, the yellow one that we had. It ended up kind of getting all over the place. That one was a little bit more runny than the other ones. So I'm just adding all the icing to each of these cookies. It's looking so beautiful. I love them. These were for my children and their friends for a little party at the park. And they all ate them all without even, you know, thinking that there was anything to the icing. They didn't taste any of the flavors. And I was wanting to get their reactions, but they devoured them before I even got to them. So you'll have to take my word that these don't taste like anything, especially the turmeric, which I was kind of concerned about. So here's a look at them now that they are done. They do need about a half hour to an hour to dry completely. So you don't want to stack them while the icing is setting. But if you do want to add sprinkles, you want to do that before it sets. So here are the smaller ones that I made. I went ahead and added some sprinkles to that as well. They're also all natural sprinkles with no artificial dye. So I was really happy to offer these to the children because there were no artificial flavors or colors and they were made with mostly organic ingredients. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information on how I tweaked this recipe from the original recipe. You can find that link down in the description box below. If you'd like to see some of our other cooking tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. That link is also in the description box below. If you wanna see what we're cooking on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram, a pepper and pine.